Hello world, my name is Coco Martek and the UmiDigi F3S is a budget phone from the company UmiDigi, a Chinese company founded in 2012. So in this video, we're going to talk about what's good, what's okay, and what really needs improvement or we're going to call it worry. Why are you talking about worry? Simulan natin kung ano yung mga magagandang features ng phone. Ang una ko talaga nagustuhan sa phone is ang kanyang build quality. The back is made of plastic and I think it's going to be subjective kasi hindi naman lahat gumagamit ng case. Pero ito na ito yung pinaka hindi fingerprint magnet phone na nagamit ko so far. So kahit ipahid mo yung phone sa mukha mo, hindi masyadong dumidigit yung oil. So kung very conscious ka about pagdikit ng fingerprint oil sa phone mo and hindi ka gumagamit ng case, check out ang UMIDG F3S. Ang nagustuhan ko din sa build quality is yung kanyang curved back. Kahit matagal mong hawakan yung phone with one hand, hindi ka masyadong mapapagod. As compared, for example, yung mga boxy phones ng iPhone, saglit pa lang parang nagdudugo na yung kamay mo. Well, obviously, OA okay yun. Pero I think you get the point. Next na nagustuhan ko with the UMIDG F3S is yung kanyang smart key. It's an additional button sa gilid, uh, opposite side ng power button and the volume rocker, wherein you can program it to different functionalities. For example, for one click, pwede ka mag-take ng screenshot. Or two clicks, pwede mo i-open, for example, yung flashlight, calculator, and hanggang three clicks siya, actually, maybe you can open your favorite application like TikTok, YouTube, or Mobile Legends. It's a feature na nakikitong useful talaga for a lot of people. Next na nagustuhan ko sa kanya is yung Kenya Network Performance because it supports 5 GHz for Wi-Fi connection. Kung hindi nyo pa alam ang ating phone, pwede siya kumunek sa either 2.4 GHz or 5 GHz Wi-Fi connection. And if you're not yet familiar, ang difference niya is ang 2.4 GHz ay... Basically, mas magbagal siya pero it can cover a, a wider range of Wi-Fi connection. And yung 5 gigahertz naman, technically, mas mabilis yung kanyang data speed pero mas narrow yung Wi-Fi range niya. Next na maganda talaga with the phone is the storage and memory. It has 6 gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of internal storage wherein you can expand the memory up to 256 gigabytes using a micro SD card. Relatively mabilis din yung kanya fingerprint unlock wherein matatagpuan pala yung fingerprint scanner sa power button and mabilis din actually yung kanya face scan unlock compared to other phones na affordable din. And lastly, maganda rin sa phone is meron siya 3.5mm headphone jack port. At least meron. So napag-usapan na natin yung mga features na nagsa-stand out talaga with the phone. Pag-usapan naman natin yung okay lang. The first one is going to be subjective dahil yun ay design. Actually, nagustuhan ko yung rear design niya kasi it's kind of modern. Ang ganda ng kulay niya kapag uh, natatamaan ng different uh, angles of light. And meron ding matte finish statement na nakalagay ay Beyond Dreams and of course the logo UMIDG. But yung harapan kasi medyo makapal yung bottom bezel which is I think understandable given na uh, yun nga affordable siya. Pero kasi for me, hindi ako masyadong fan ng water drop or tear drop notch style for the selfie camera. Mas prefer ko kasi yung punch hole. So again, it's going to be subjective. Depende na rin to sa'yo. Next na okay lang isang kanyang processor. Meron siyang chipset na Unisoc T610. And actually, yung mga day-to-day -day na paggamit ng phone, yung mga social media, gamit ka lang ng Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, or mag-e-email ka lang, mag-text. Okay naman yung phone, mabilis siya. Kasi ganun naman yung trend ngayon, yung mga affordable chipsets, mas bumibilas naman talaga. But the thing is, may mga phones na within the same price range rin, pero they're a lot faster than the Unisoc P610. So to give you a perspective, ang kanyang speed ay relatively comparable to the speed of Tecno Puba 3. Mga nakuha kong scores for the Geekbench 5 and Antutu benchmarks are relatively plus and minus ka na lang sa Puba 3. 
And in terms of gaming, I played with Mobile Legends, high graphic settings. Hindi ako naglag, hindi ako nag frame drops. Even with the uh, 5v5 clashes, and nagustuhan ko experience niya kasi malaki yung screen display niya. And again, dahil sa 5 gigahertz na Wi-Fi connection, hindi talaga ako naglalag as compared with phones within the same price range. Same goes with other games, uh, Asphalt 9, hindi ako nagkaroon ng lags or frame drops. Maganda pa rin yung gaming experience. And same goes with Call of Duty, high graphic settings, no lags and no frame drops. Still enjoyable experience. And if you're wondering with the Genshin Impact experience, you can still play it with low graphic settings. Pero of course, mas optimal kung lowest graphic settings. Nagkaroon lang ako ng issue one time nung ininstall ko yung Genshin Impact, nung overheat siya kahit na naka-aircon ako. So it's one thing to take note. Next na okay lang with the phone is yung kanyang speakers. Hindi masyadong deep yung bass niya and I guess okay lang talaga yung sound quality niya. But I really appreciate na it can get really loud. Anyway, here's a sample speaker test for you to judge. Next na okay lang is ang kanyang screen display. Although LCD display siya, kudos sa Umedigi for creating deep enough blacks for an LCD display. Ang kanyang screen ay may 6.7 inch LCD HD plus 720 by 1650 pixels, 269 pixels per inch, 82.3% screen to body ratio, and no high refresh rate. Which is understandable given na again affordable phone siya. And based on actual experience, I enjoy it naman siya when I watch uh, anime or YouTube videos or TikTok. Next, na okay lang sa kanya is ang kanyang battery performance. Meron siyang 5,150 mAh battery. And based on my experience, mga around 4 hours of screen on time siya. May mga times na maganda talaga yung battery performance. Pero may mga times naman na medyo mabilis mag-drain yung battery. Although in their defense, may mga times talaga na sinasagad ko yung game experience to test out the phone. And lastly, for the okay lang category, ang kanyang software experience. It's currently running Android 11 and parang stock, stock, stock Android experience siya which I appreciate kasi fan talaga ako ng stock Android. But may mga times lang na may mga konting bugs ako na experience. For example, naglaro ko ng Mobile Legends and pag swipe ko pa for the notification para may na blackboard ng lumabas dun sa taas na naghinder sa paglalaro ko ng Mobile Legends. And merong isang widget na lock screen widget na parati kong ginagamit na hindi ko mapagana. Well, napagana ko one time pero after nun, hindi ko na ulit siya mapagana. And for our last category which is the what really needs improvement or ang ating worry Unfortunately, it's the camera performance. For the rear cameras, we have a 48 megapixel main rear lens with aperture of f1.8, 8 megapixel ultra wide f2.2 120 field of view, and 5 megapixel macro lens. Overall photos, I think okay lang naman yung color compositions. Uh, I think okay naman yung sharpness niya. Pero kasi malaki talaga yung difference ng main lens and ng ultra wide lens. Mapapansin mo talaga. May mga times din na nahihirapan ako mag-focus with the phone. You can still take good shots with this phone. For the selfie camera naman, meron siya 16 megapixels. And actually, I really like the skin tone. Not only yung kanyang selfie camera, pero pati yung rear camera. Kasi hindi siya, hindi siya oversaturated. And tama lang yung details and sharpness niya. Pero may mga times kasi parang nag out of focus yung maka using the selfie camera. Kaya medyo nahihirapan ako mag-take ng photos. Pero actually selfie camera okay naman siya yung overall quality niya. And what really needs improvement is yung kanyang video capability. Kasi for the selfie camera it can only take up to 720p videos. Pero at least with the rear camera pwede ka mag 1080p videos. This is a sample video test for the selfie camera. 720p lang siya. Pero I like the video quality overall ng kanyang self-video. Uh, yung kanyang skin tone is just right. Hindi ako masyadong orangey, hindi ako masyadong pale. And yung kanyang sharpness is really good. Lalo na kung tinignan mo yung mga leaves niya. So although 720p siya, yung overall quality niya maganda. Para siyang 1080p na if you're looking at the screen right now. So comment down your thoughts about the selfie camera for taking videos. This is the video test without the video stabilization. 
Although mas maganda siya tignan yung video quality, you're gonna sacrifice yung video stabilization niya. Pero hindi naman siya ganun ka shaky as compared to other phones within the same price range. So if you're planning to take videos with this phone, okay naman siya. It's not that bad, it's not the best, pero okay lang. Lastly, para sa ating Wernie, isang kanyang charging speed because it can only support 10 watts charging. Given na 5,150 mAh yung ating battery, medyo may time talaga to charge our phone. So based on my experience, a 0 to 100% takes around 2 hours and 15 minutes and 30 minutes of charging gives me around 22 or 23% na battery. So those are my thoughts for the Umi DG F3S. You can buy this in AliExpress. I'll link your link in the description box if you want to purchase this phone. Overall, it's an okay phone if you're going to use it as your secondary phone, your extra phone. Hindi ka naman masyadong madidismaya with this phone unless you really want better camera experience. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed the content. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click on the notification bell to get notified for more tech videos. Ma-appreciate ko talaga yun. Dahil na-improve ang aking YouTube algorithm to suggest more videos to other people. My name is Coco Martech. I'll see you in the next video and take care guys. Bye-bye.